Hi, my name is Steve Specht. I'm the head football coach at Cincinnati St. Xavier High School. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the Bomber defense. What we like to run is a 3-3 odd stack defense with two corners and three safeties across the back, giving us a look of a 3-3-5. What we're going to talk about today is what we call our bomber defensive package. Now in the past we've done a lot of different things, but most of it has always been out of an odd front. We've been a 3-4 team, we've been what we've run lately, a lot of 3-3, the odd stack. And there's a few reasons I want to talk about the odd stack and why we've gone to it. Uh, I think no matter what you do in this game, you have to establish a philosophy. You have to have something you hang your hat on. And in our philosophy, it's pretty simple. As from an even to an odd front, we want to stay in an odd front. And the reason I like the odd front is you, you can angle and slant to get into a reduction. I don't think you tip off where the bubble is. Offenses can't look for the three technique. You can get into the reduction any way you want uh, by staying in an odd front. So we like that. Coverage scheme wise, we're mostly a three deep, team, uh, three deep team. We run a lot of fire zone coverage, a lot of storm zone coverage. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, we feel it's easier to fit our personnel with a three man front as opposed to a four man front. We're not blessed with a lot of size, uh, but we got a lot of hard working kids. We can always find a bigger nose guard and we can find longer bodies that can run on the defensive end, so it fits our personnel a little bit better. And the biggest reason for the move from the 3-4 to the 3-3 is the fact that we were able to adjust the formations really easily. There's not a lot of thinking. It doesn't matter if we get a 3 by one set, a 2 by 2 set. We can stay with our stunts, our blitzes, and ultimately, we keep it simple and we play fast. I think if I give any advice to any young coaches, it's always keep it simple enough so that your guys can play fast. And as that's what we try to focus on as far as our philosophy. Again, we're an odd front. We run a lot of three deep schemes. It fits our personnel because we don't have a lot of bigger kids. We can adjust the formation quickly, stay with our front, keep it simple and play fast. Again, why, mo why move from the 3-4 to the 3-3? Well, it's simple for us, speed. We want to get more speed on the field. I think in the past when we'd run our 3-4, we always had that big physical sandbacker, studbacker that would play over a tight end. Well, with the advent of the spread offense, that bigger backer was forced to cover a slot receiver that was much faster and much more athletic. So we shifted, went to the 3-3, so that we can get five, six defensive backs in the game at all times and play a lot faster. Our front three don't, haven't learned anything new. We've run the same concepts when we were a 3-4 team to we, now we're a 3-3 team. They haven't learned anything new. So it's not as if we've had to change our teaching progression as coaches. So we feel a lot real good about that. Another good point for the 3-3, nine out of the 11 players on defense know exactly what their assignment is when we call the defense. We have two players that make adjustments and checks. Everybody else stays simple. They play exactly what we call, and I really like that concept a lot. Uh, obviously right here, they will not change regardless of motion and or formation. They play it and they play fast. Offenses are unable to dictate what we can and cannot do now. I know back when we ran a 3-4, I'm a big matchup zone concept guy in coverage, and what offenses would do, would di they dictate what we could run by running three by one sets, or empty sets, forcing us to drop an outside linebacker and rush an inside linebacker. And after a while of pounding our head into a wall, we decided we had to make a change. So this was the first thing that, that we went to. Uh, finally, again, we talked about it up here, our front's always balanced. We're balanced across the board. We've got three down linemen, three stack backers, and five, five defensive backs across the board that we'll talk about in a minute. We're always balanced. There's no bubble. There's nothing to check to. And what I especially like is that quarterbacks are no longer able to pre-snap read a two-deep coverage or a three-deep coverage. We give the illusion that it's both. So let's talk a little bit about our base defensive alignment. First, our two ends. They're going to be in what we call four alignment, head up on the offensive tackles on both sides. 
A lot of people will ask if we ever get into a wider five or if we reduce down. We never reduce down, but we will get him wider in passing situations and put him into a wider five technique. But for the majority of the time, they're going to be head up in a four alignment on the offensive tackle. Our nose guard is going to align head up on the center. We put him in a zero alignment on the offensive center. And then our stack backers, our jet, who we always align to the strong side, our Sam, who is always aligned in the middle, and our Willback, who is always aligned weak side, they're going to stack behind those three down linemen, and they're always going to be anywhere from three to four and a half yards. A lot of people will ask this question, why three to four and a half? It all depends on the offense we're facing. Against option teams, we like to press the line of scrimmage quickly. We'll cheat them up to three and a half yards so we can press that line of scrimmage. Against passing teams, we may keep them at four and a half yards. So that's a game plan decision that we'll make depending on the offenses that we see. Our safeties alignment is always is really simple. They're going to split the crotch of the tight end as the strong safety is doing here or the imaginary tight end as the weak safety is doing here, they're going to align seven yards deep. And that's pretty standard for us. As long as we get a two-back set, our safeties, our strong side safety and our weak side safety are always going to be seven yards deep, an outside shade of a tight end or an imaginary tight end. The only change up for them will be versus a slot receiver. If they get a slot receiver that displaces, we'll go to an inside shade of that slot receiver and we'll align seven yards deep. They do also have a hash rule. The hash rule will tell them never to align more than three yards outside the hash, never more than three yards inside the hash, depending on ball placement on the field. Again, that's a coaching decision. We'll talk about this early in the week and we'll make our corrections or actually our adjustments with the safeties during the week. Corners. Corners alignment's going to be an outside shade of the number one receiver, and they're going to align seven yards deep. So we want to create the illusion with our secondary that we're completely seven, we're five, five across, seven yards deep. They also have a six yard hash or sideline rule. If the receiver lines six yards or inside to, uh, close to the hash, they'll cheat to an inside shade or they'll even go to three, four yards inside of him depending again on the type of team we're playing. Finally, I think the key to our defense, the guy that makes this work for us is who, the player we term the adjuster. A lot of people in the past will call him a free safety, he's the middle safety. We call him the adjuster because this player in our scheme is going to move around a lot. Ideally, this is the best, com the most complete player we have on the team. He's an individual that can play center field, he can play down in the box, he can blitz, he can do a lot of different things. So primarily, he's going to align according to game plan. If we're going to align him in the middle of the field versus a two-back set, he'll go to the strong side guard, he'll line again seven yards deep. But we can move him wherever we want. And that's one of the, the things I like a lot about this defense as far as disguise is concerned. Right now, you can tell if a quarterback came to the line of scrimmage, he's going to see two wide safeties and a middle safety. Right now, he doesn't know if it's a three deep coverage or a two deep coverage scheme. We like that from an element of disguise uh, for our part. Now, the adjuster can also move his alignment. We can falcon him. We, he's always the default falcon. We can line him strong side, three yards outside of a tight end, three yards deep if we needed to. Not only do we, do we align him here, but we can align him to the weak side. Three yards outside the tackle again, three yards deep. If we wanted to, we could align him in the middle of the field and replace all these any backer. If we wanted to blitz the jet backer, we could replace him with the adjuster. If we wanted to blitz the Sam backer, we could replace him with the adjuster. And again, the Will backer, we could replace him with the adjuster. And I'll get into detail about this as we move along discussing what we do with our defense. Now we can adjust alignment as well in this. And what we'll do from an alignment perspective is we can call what we have, we call it a spread front. 
And all the spread front does is it takes our two outside stack backers, our Jet and our Will, and it aligns them up on the line of scrimmage, giving us back to a five-man front. In the old 50 defense, this is exactly what the look we'd give them. We'd have an outside backer over to tight end or wider. We'd have the weak side backer, uh, obviously the Will here, up on the open side line of scrimmage. The only difference now is we only have one backer in the, men, in the middle. So that's our spread front. We could also call what, or tag what we call Sparrow. And if we call Sparrow, it tells the strong safety to align in the box three by three outside that tight end. So that's our Sparrow adjustment. After the Sparrow adjustment, we could call a Bluff adjustment. Now the Bluff adjustment tells both the strong side safety and the weak side safety to align down in the box. The strong side safety, again, being three yards outside this tight end and three yards deep. The weak side safety then will align three yards outside the end man of the line of scrimmage, three yards deep. What has it done? gives us eight men in the box. Again, just one way that we are able to get more run support immediately if we wanted to. We could just call our bluff front, get everybody up in the box. Obviously, that takes away the read for the quarterback. He's going to know right away that we're in some type of three deep, but against some teams, you really don't care. So that's our bluff front. Our final front would be our ninja front. Our ninja front is opposite the sparrow front. We're just going to take our weak side safety and drop him down in the box, three yards outside, end man line of scrimmage, three yards deep. So I guess we usually run our stack front 80% of the time, but we can couple, we can go ahead and run spread if we need to, we can sparrow adjust, we can bluff adjust, or we can run our ninja front depending on the team we're facing. So those are all the fronts that you're going to see from our defense. And we'll talk a little bit more about this as we go on today. As we talked before, one of the nicest things about this defense is the guy in the middle, that adjuster. We can take the adjuster and do just about anything we want with them. We can align them all over the field. The key to this though, and we talk about it in our coverage schemes, is if we're going to play games with the adjuster, if we're going to remove him from the mix here and align him and bring him from different areas, let's say we align him here, we automatically have to sling the coverage and that's automatically built into the system. When we sling the coverage, it's going to tell this weak side safety he's going to drop and he's going to play the center field. That automatically has to take place so that we can move this adjuster wherever we want him. And it's a great, it's a great technique. For instance, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and make a call. One of our calls, one of the things we like to run, is with the outside back, back, I mean, I'm the adjuster, we'll call strong flash storm. In our strong flash, strong side, adju the adjuster is going to go strong side and he's going to run an edge blitz. Defensive end is going to go ahead and he's going to loop B gap. Nose is going to loop A, backside end is going to loop to the C gap and he's going to contain rush. So there's the pattern blitz. That's our flash, as we call it right here, strong flash. The storm coverage is going to be four under three deep, but as we mentioned before, no matter what happens, if we're going to move the adjuster, anytime we call flash, it's an automatic sling check. So we're going to sling the coverage. We're going to have our seam defender right here. Weak side safety slinging the center field. We have the backside will is going to go and play our seam backside. Sam's hooked to curl. Now our jet is hooked to curl. So that's the, same. That's the whole scheme here. Strong flash. We're going to play storm coverage behind it. It's an automatic sling. We can do the same thing the opposite way. Here's a strong flash. So 
So let's take a minute, let's get rid of all of this, and let's talk about a weak flash. So if I went ahead and erased all my players, get rid of all this, I came through and decided I wanted to run weak flash. It's a four man game so we're going to tag it storm. We're going to go ahead and take our jet backer, we're going to take our wheel backer, they're going to align in the box, that's not going to change. Strong safety is going to align the same, weak safety is going to align the same, Corner will align the same, corner will align the same. The adjuster now, because we have called weak flash, it's going to align to the weak side, right here. So we have the adjuster three by three, but the difference now, he's going to run the flash from the weak side. The weak side end now is going to penetrate B gap. Nose going to penetrate A. This end's going to penetrate C, and he's contained rush. The coverage scheme, again, we're bringing the safety, or the adjuster, on flash, so the safety automatically has to sling the coverage. So what are we going to get? We're going to get sling coverage. He's going to go to center field. Will's going to play backside seam. Sam's going to play hook to curl. Jet's going to play hook to curl. Strong safety is going to play seam defense. So here's two concepts. One, we're bringing the adjuster to the strong side. Two, we're bringing the adjuster to the weak side. That's one of the ways we can get him involved in a blitz. We can do whatever we want with him. That's what I like. We can align him. We have some blitzes we'll call blade, which strong side will bring him up B gap and he'll fire the B gap. We can call weak blade and he'll go weak B. We can call axe and bring him the A gaps. Whatever you want to call it. Couple it to your system, move them around and create havoc. If you have the right player, you can do a lot of special things with him. We were very fortunate this past year in 2005. Our adjuster is a six foot two, 195 pound sophomore that can really run. In two years, we're going to do a lot more with him than we're doing with him right now. So these are concepts that involve him on a blitz. Always remember, if you're going to blitz the adjuster, you have to sling the coverage automatically. It's an automatic sling, but it gives you another weapon. It's good stuff to run just to give an offense something different to look at. So we've talked a little bit about the adjuster and what you can do with him as far as movement and blitzes. Now I want to talk a little bit about the adjuster and replacement. Our key term for him is Falcon. So when we get into any kind of defense where we want the adjuster to replace a blitzer, we're going to tag it Falcon. Let me give you a better, a better example here. Let's say I wanted to bring a strong side blitz. I'm sorry. Let's say I wanted to bring a strong side blitz with the jet, however you want to move him. Maybe I want to take this end. Sorry, let me use it right here. Maybe I want to take this end and loop him C gap. Bring this nose, loop him B, and scream the jet through the A. Whatever combination you want. And then backside, I'll take this end and I'll contain rush. I want a four man rush to start start happening. Might call this something along the lines of strong loop and we'll call storm coverage behind it. If I want the adjuster to replace the jet, it's real simple. I'll call strong loop storm falcon. Now what the falcon does is it tells the adjuster and the strong safety since we're strong side, we're running this blitz strong side, tells these two to switch responsibilities. So essentially what we're going to get is this jet's going to erase himself. He's going to run the blitz, so he's going to be gone. Erase that here. He's going to be gone. The adjuster is then going to drop down in the box, 
and give us an additional defender that they don't account for. In the event that they pass, he'll play the seam, and the strong safety will play center field. And again, that's just by, by replacing the adjuster to the call. Strong loop, he knows that jet's going to run the loop. He's going to replace to the strong side. Storm coverage, because it's a four-man game. Again, we're replacing here. We've got seam defender here, hook to curl here, and we've got another hook to curl defender right there. That's the progression for them. Now we could take it a step further, and maybe we tag some kind of fire zone with this. As we talked before, erase these guys. Maybe we want to run a strong loop X. And we're going to go ahead and take the SAM. And he's going to run the X combination with the nose. So we might call strong loop X. Now it's no longer storm coverage. It's got to be fire coverage. It's a five man game. Strong loop X fire. And again, we're going to tag it Falcon. So now the adjuster has replaced the strong side blitz. Since we lost the Sam backer to the blitz and tagged it fire, the remaining backer will now play the hole. Simple concept. Kids get used to it. So it's a difference between a four man rush and a five man rush. Now that's all strong side. We can do the same thing with any of these backers in the adjuster. If we wanted to bring something weak side, we call it weak and then the adjuster could replace. So let me go ahead and draw that up. Talk a little bit about that in a minute. Get rid of all this. Let's say they come out in the right set again. Same deal. We've still got our corner. We've still got our wheel backer. We've got our jet backer. We've got our other corner, our strong safety, our adjuster, and our weak safety. Maybe we wanted to run weak loop. And we're going to tag that with a storm tag as well. What we're going to get, we're here. He's just coming. We're in contain here. That's the combination. Because we've called it weak and we tag it Falcon, adjuster knows he's replacing to the weak side. So the adjuster now is going to work his way down and he'll play the backside seam. Because we have tagged it weak, the weak side safety knows he's exchanging responsibilities. He's going to play, come back, and he's going to play center field. Front side, same deal. We have our seam defender, we have our hook to curl defender, we have our hook to curl defender. There's our storm coverage. Four under, three deep. Well, even though the corners are playing outside leverage man. So, we call it strong, tag it falcon, the adjuster replaces strong. We call weak, tag it falcon, the adjuster replaces weak. So this is the concept. We could bring the SAM as well. If we wanted to do what we did before and added an X to it. Here's the X splits. Now we've got to change the storm coverage to fire. So we have weak loop X, fire. We've tagged it falcon. So now we lose the hook to curl defender here. We lose the hook to curl defender there. He runs the blitz. The jet now plays the hole. We still have our seam defender from the adjuster. We have our seam defender from the safety. Weak side safety has exchanged responsibility because of the Falcon tag. Now he's playing center field. Very simple concept in how the adjuster can replace all of these backer positions. And again, whatever you want to do, whatever your combination is, that's how we're going to replace on the backside. All right, from the, from the secondary perspective with the adjuster. So we've talked about all the adjustments we can make with the adjuster and the Falcon call. 
What we'll talk about now is the adjustments we can make with the strong side safety and the weak side safety. The strong side safety adjustments, again, are always going to be what we term sparrow. He is always the sparrow. So we can have him replace any strong side stunt that we want to run simply by tagging sparrow. For example, again, we talked earlier about the loop stunt. If we're going to go ahead and call strong loop, we're going to go ahead and run the loop right here. B gap, the jet's going to shoot to the A gap. Backside end is going to loop here to the B gap. Because we have established sparrow, strong loop, we call it strong loop storm. The second call would be Sparrow. This safety knows he's going to move down in the box. He can move or he can pre-align if you want to do that. A lot of times, as we talked earlier, he can pre-align three yards outside, three yards deep off of this tight end. Gives us another look. He's still going to be the seam defender, He's just going to drop from inside the box. So that's our sparrow tag. So we so we've seen strong loop storm falcon where the adjuster replaced and the strong safety played center field. Now we're looking at strong loop storm sparrow with the strong safety down in the box. So that's one adjustment. If we wanted to, we could also tag Sparrow, or I'm sorry, not Sparrow, we could also tag Bluff. We talked about this earlier in alignment. Our Bluff tag simply takes our weak side safety and moves him up in the box. Three by three here. So we've got an eight man front. Weak side safety is still gonna play the seam. We're still gonna run the loop only we're giving the offense a totally different look. The adjuster now is going to play center field. Another tag with the safeties. Again, bluff is both safeties in the box. We can go ahead and add the third tag, which is simply ninja. The ninja tag simply puts the strong safety back and it leaves the weak safety up in his ninja alignment three yards outside and three yards deep the end man on the line of scrimmage. The responsibility for the strong safety hasn't changed. He's still a seam defender. He's just a seam defender from a different angle. It's a totally different look for the, for the offense. So we can move the adjuster with Falcon, we can lose, move the strong safety with Sparrow, we can move the weak safety with the ninja call right here. And you can couple it with a lot of different fronts. As we stated before, we can run a spread front out of all this. And if we decide to run a spread front, we're going to give the look that we have the jet up on a line, Two back set again. We're going to take the will and put him up on the line. Now we'll have our corner, we'll have our adjuster, we'll have our corner. We know we've got a spread front, so we would call spread. Let's say we went strong loop. Strong loop storm. Same defense, only now we're giving it a different look. He's coming from a different angle. I may call a strong loop storm out of a spread front more in a passing situation. So he hides the blitz a little bit more so the front can't see it. We're still here. Now he's going to draw a hook to curl. He's going to draw a hook to curl. We've got our strong safety who will align here and drop the seam. We've got our weak side safety who is going to align here and drop the seam. If 
we want to get really creative, let's take it another step. We could call spread, strong, strong loop storm, and tag the second call with a bluff. Both the strong side safety and the weak side safety know that any time we have a spread front called, so let me get rid of this here, Anytime we have a spread front call, they don't need to go three by three. They can stack on an inside shade. So we'll get the strong safety here. We'll get the weak safety here. Again, we've got eight men in the box, spread front. We've bluffed both the strong side safety and the weak side safety. And we'll still have our adjuster as the center field safety. Sorry about that. He's right here. So again, same defense. Now we've seen this loop defense from a number of different looks. We've seen it from Falcon look, we've seen it from a Sparrow look, from a Bluff look, from a Ninja look. Now we're seeing it from a spread look with a Bluff. You can, there's a million combinations to give the offense different looks. Same defense, looks like a different defense to the offense simply because we're coming from a number of different angles. Once you have your perimeter intact, you understand what coverages you want to run, how you want to mix the coverages with the front. We can talk about doing a lot of different things up front. We've talked about some, some stunt schemes, how to move with Falcon, with Sparrow, with Bluff, with Ninja. But no matter what you do with the window dressing, these six guys up front have to be able to play football. And what we want to do as much as we possibly can is keep this box intact. Our three down players and our three stack backer, we want to keep this box intact as much as we possibly can. Forefront of every defense, you want to stop the run. If you're able to stop the run, you're going to be successful. A lot of spread teams, and in the past we used to do this, when they'd give us a one-back set, we'd widen the backers. Well, we were geniuses. It took us a whole year to figure out that teams wanted you to widen the backers so that they could run on you a little bit easier. So what we made a commitment to was keeping this box intact as much as we possibly can. As a matter of fact, I think the only time we get out of this box is if teams consistently give us empty sets and really spread the field. In that case, we're more inclined to, to widen the stack backers because they don't have anybody in the backfield to really run the ball. But these guys have to stay intact and we're going to work hard to keep these guys intact as much as we possibly can. Now once said, what we're going to do is play a read scheme or if we're going to stunt, they're going to have gaps to fit. A read scheme is pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and number, or I'm sorry, letter the gaps we're going to have the A gap, which everybody does, the B gap, the C gap, D, however you want to work it, same way backside, A, B, C. And we're going to harp on fitting the gaps, fitting the gaps, fitting the gaps. The first thing we'll talk about here is what we do from a read scheme perspective. And that read scheme is pretty simple. These two are going to work in tandem right here. The end, the jet, the end and the will. Actually, let's add the third, the nose and the Sam. These guys are all going to work in tandem. They're going to read his block. These two are going to read the center's block. These two are going to read the tackle's block across the board. And they're going to work in tandem on this. And let me show you what I mean by that. We're worrying about all gap control, making sure they fit their gaps, they know exactly where they're supposed to go. Sorry. What we're going to do is take these guys and teach them read scheme. This guy can block one of three ways, in our opinion. He can block down, so we'll put down in red. He can block base. We'll put that in blue. He can block out, loop scheme. We'll put that in green. These are the options, the three options that we're going to work on. Anytime 
he gets a down block. Anytime this end gets a down block, he is going to squeeze with that down block. He's going to squeeze him down. He's going to keep him off the backer. So he's going to collision and squeeze. Because he has done that, he will fit to the B-gap. He's a B-gap player. So he's going to step, and he's going to fit, and he's going to be a B-gap player. That's on his read scheme. The Jets going to work, as we talked before, in tandem with him. He gets that down block. He's going to step, and he's going to fit the C-gap right there. That's all predicated on this offensive tackle giving him a down block. Going to collision, keep him off the backer. He's going to fit C-gap. The Jet is going to step, widen, and fit C-gap. So that's the basic premise behind how we're going to coach this up. And that's on that down block. So let's take a look in, at the blue here for a sec. As far as the blue is concerned, we get a base block. This is entirely up to how you want to coach it. and We will change this from week to week. Sometimes if teams are heavy on tackle to tackle run, we're going to teach him to step Power step to his inside shoulder and secure B-gap. Power step, secure B-gap. We may change it depending on if they want to run wide stretch. He may power step and take C-gap. It's, it's immaterial how you want to play. It's what fits your needs the best. Most of the time we're going to have him power step and take B-gap. The jet has to work opposite of that. If he's going to power step and work to the B-gap, the jet obviously has to power step and loop to the C-gap. So that's how they'll work in tandem. Base block, he's going to collision, maintain inside leverage, secure B-gap. The jet in tandem will step and secure C-gap, working opposite that end. The final step in this whole scheme would be some type of loop scheme. If we get some type of loop scheme, from this offensive tackle. If he's going to loop wide, again, we want to keep it simple for the end. As soon as he sees this loop, he's going to step. It should take him with the read. So he's going to step with this loop scheme, and he's going to secure C-gap. The jet will work opposite of him, step, and he will secure B-gap. And that's going to work on both sides. It's a very simple premise. It's not rocket science. I think everybody in some way, shape, or form has worked this. But we're going to have, for the most part, one side is going to be a read scheme, and the other side is going to be some kind of stunt scheme. But that's our basic read scheme for our fronts. For the middle, for our, our salmon, our nose, we are going to predetermine which A-gap this nose guard is going to secure. It could be weak side, it could be strong side, it could be the right, it could be the left. Normally what we're going to do is tell him to go ahead and secure the strong side A-gap, which would tell the SAM to secure the weak side A-gap. He can change it at any point in time on his own. If he wants to call right, he may just look at the nose guard and say right, right, right. That would put the nose guard secure in the right side A-gap, and the SAM would secure the left side A-gap. You can do it any way you want. Maybe it's field boundary. You can change that up to whatever suits your needs, but we want to keep it simple for these two guys. You've got to figure all these, any offense, these guards have good angles at the SAM back or they have angles at the nose. We want to keep it simple for these guys that enables them to play as fast as they possibly can. The change up to all this is going to depend on what we are doing with the stunt side. So we may want to run some kind of deal where we're going to loop C and press B. Almost all of our games, and I'll talk about this in our stunt package, will involve three guys. The end, the jet, and the nose here, if we're going to run it strong side. If the nose is going to loop A, the SAM automatically will fill the opposite A-gap, we will play read scheme backside here. 
So we'll go ahead. We fit, we've, we've taken care of fitting our gaps front side. We're looping to C. We've got B. Sam's going to shoot, going to secure A. Nose is looping to this A. And we've got reed scheme back side. They're going to work in tandem opposite of one another. And that's been very effective for us. Now, if we're going to run a fire zone or some kind of concept that way, it's going to change a little bit. But from a read scheme perspective or a stunt perspective, that's all we do. We keep it very simple. I think this past year in 2005, we probably ran read scheme 60% of the time, stunted 25% of the time, and the remaining we'd either rush three or we'd bring five or six, depending on the situation. But predominantly, that's what we're going to do. We're going to read scheme up front. We'll stunt one side, read scheme back side. We're going to run a storm coverage or a fire zone coverage behind it. That's, that's really the basics, the basic elements involved in our defense. We can also, as we talked earlier, disguise it with our, our coverage. We can sparrow it, ninja it, falcon it, bluff it. We can do a lot of different things. It all depends on what the offense dictates to us and how we want to take advantage of it. I think the last issue that we need to address when talking about our fronts and how we fit gaps involves the spread front. Obviously, if, if we get out of our stack look and move to the spread, we've lost that read scheme between the stack backer and the defensive end. Once we move him out, we have an issue. From that, with that being said, we've tried a few different things in the past. We've tried to run spread with some bluff which moves the, I actually tried to squeeze the strong safety and the weak safety down into a stack backer position and tried to get these guys read scheming with the ends the same way. The problem with that is it takes a lot of time. You're trying to do an awful lot with coverage with these safeties. So I think adding another step to what they do and trying to teach them the read scheme it forces them to think, and I don't think they play quite as fast as they do when they're not thinking. So what we decided and what we've done, not that this wouldn't work, it just wasn't good for us. What we've done is simply decided that when we go into a spread front, we're going to stun out of it. For the most part, we're going to try to bring some type of fire zone involving both outside backers both outside backers, outside stack backers, and the three down guys. In any case, whatever the combination is, if we're going to loop here and loop here, if we're going to loop here and loop here, we've got the gaps covered. We're completely gapped out. The jet's going to, or I'm sorry, the end's going to assume the C gap, and he's going to secure that. The jet's going to secure the B gap. Backside will will secure B gap, backside end will secure the C gap, and then you're back to your normal games with both the nose and the sand backer. One of them is going to secure strong side A, one is going to secure the weak side A, but we're completely gapped out. The problem you run into with the spread front if you're not moving and blitzing these players, and I'll show you this here in a minute, let's just say Sorry. Let's just say you wanted to play a game weak side. We talked about the strong loop before. Maybe we're looping here. We loop him to the B gap. We bring him into the A gap. We're sound here. No problem. However, if we get a reach scheme right here, we'll go back to the green pen. If we get a reach scheme right here, he's going to be taught what? He's going to step with this and secure the C gap. The problem with that is now we have no stack backer. The will who normally aligns here would be working in tandem and would fill to the B gap. We would have the SAM and the A gap. But we don't have that will stacked anymore. We have him outside. And because he's outside, we're going to create a pretty big gap. Even if this SAM backer does his job well and he steps hard here, We've got a pretty big gap that's going to be created right here in this running lane. For that reason, we don't like to run 
just a one side stunt if we're going to get into a spread package. If we're going to get into a spread package, we're going, we're going to get after you. We're going to blitz a little bit. We're going to send a lot of guys. I like spread a lot against spread teams. Hence the term spread for some, some of the reasons. But I don't like it at all against power teams. I don't like it against two back teams. You create too many running, get, running lanes. Or if you're getting penetration and you're blitzing a lot, you're going to fall prey to, to guys getting upfield. Uh, they're out of control sometimes, and you're not, you're not able to really secure the run game. So, so we're, going to try to, we're going to try to move guys around. If we're going to run strong loop, we're going to play something backside so that this doesn't affect us, so that we can make sure we gap out. So right now, we're going to go strong loop. He's going to hit C-gap. We may just go strong loop. Weak edge. And we'll tag that. We'll couple that with some terms so that we have a fire zone. Weak edge will be right here. We'll take C-gap, and it'll take B-gap. The same is going to secure A-gap. We're gapped out. Again, we want to make sure that no matter what you do, we're sound. Now, if you're better football players than we are, you're going to win the battle the majority of the time. But we feel we've got to give our kids an opportunity to be successful. And if we're running a spread front, we're only playing a game on one side, we're not giving them that chance to be successful because we're not, easy, we're not able to gap out completely. And we want to make sure that, again, we're going to, we're going to gap out. Now, you can play some games with the secondary to make sure that, that you're assuming gaps. For instance, before, if we wanted to play a game and call uh, strong side, something to the strong side and fill with a ninja down in the box and have him assume one of the gaps, you can do that as well. There's an awful lot you can do this, but for today I just want to talk about just the basics on gapping out and again with the spread front, we want to be real careful with that. When we talk alignment of our stack defense, we're going to start up front with our nose and our two tackles. The nose is going to be in a zero alignment over a center. Both defensive ends are going to align in a four technique over the offensive, directly over the offensive tackles. And then we're going to have three stack backers. Now the three stack backers are going to align anywhere from three to four and a half yards depending on the team we're playing. And as we mentioned earlier, if it's a running team, we may want to press the line of scrimmage. We may cheat him up to three yards. Passing teams, we're going to keep him at four and a half yards. So that's their basic alignment. Very seldom will we break this box. We try to keep the six intact as much as possible, and we will move late if we need to. The two wide safeties are going to align, splitting the crotch of the tight end seven yards deep, and to the split side, he will align over an imaginary tight end, and he'll split the crotch of the imaginary tight end seven yards deep. The corners will play outside leverage on number one. We're going to go without the corners today because we try to eliminate them from everything we do in the middle and focus on these, eight, these nine guys. I'm sorry. The adjuster will align anywhere on the field. Now, if I, took the, if I assume the role of the adjuster, normally I can align seven yards over a strong side guard. Now, we can change his alignment by simply tagging a falcon. If we called strong falcon, he would shift to the strong side, and his alignment would be three yards outside that tight end, three yards deep. If we wanted to call weak falcon, we would take that same adjuster and we would move him weak side and man on line three yards outside three yards deep. That's a way we can get seven men in the box. Some other adjustments off of this we can go ahead and call Sparrow. The Sparrow is our strong side safety and he'd go ahead and drop down a strong side in the box and he'll play three yards outside three yards deep and the adjuster can stay in the middle of the field. Again it's a different way to get to a seven man front. If we called Ninja We'll take our weak side safety, roll him up in the box, and then roll our sparrow, the strong safety, back. The adjuster, in the meantime, can move accordingly. He can align in the middle. He can cheat late. If we want to get into a too deep look, we can do a lot of different things. But primarily, we want to stay in our base alignment with the weak side safety at 7, the strong side safety at 7, 
and obviously the adjuster at seven. The last option we have with the secondary is to call, give them a bluff tag. And our bluff tag will walk both the strong side safety up as well as the weak side safety, three by three over the tie, outside the tight end or three by three on the offensive tackle. We can get eight men in the box. Those are our safety adjustments. Now, if we want to change the front, we can give it a spread tag. We can call spread and take both stack backers and walk them up on the line. So Matt, go ahead and walk up on the line. Matt Freeze, go ahead and walk up on the line. That'll give us a, a spread front. So we've got a five man front. We can shift our secondary accordingly. If I wanted to run a strong side blitz, I could drop the adjuster down to the strong side, give us a totally different look. I could tag Sparrow with it and drop the strong safety down in the box. I could run a bluff tag, drop both the strong safety and the weak safety down and give offenses different look. That's what I like a lot about this defense is it gives us freedom to get into a lot of different looks, but we keep it relatively simple. Go ahead and shift back into the stack, guys. So those are the fronts that we're gonna play with the majority of the time. Up front with our defensive linemen, they're not going to change alignment. We'll always be in a zero alignment with our nose guard no matter what we do. Occasionally, we like to take the open side defensive end and put him in a wide five. Passing situations, especially if you have an impact player that can rush a quarterback, we'll go ahead and put him in a wide five and just let him, let him play football, let him get after it and play football. We covered a lot of material today. I hope you found something worthwhile, something that you might be able to implement into your own defensive system, and I wish you all the luck in the world in the upcoming seasons.